Good morning and welcome to this session in the context of the European Waste Reduction Week. It's going to be an exchange of a good regional best practices in the area of packaging. That is the focus topic of this year's edition. And for the introduction, we have uh, Sergio Perez, uh, Director General of External Action for Navarra. Okay, good morning everyone and thanks a lot for being with us today in this event we organized during the European Week of Waste Reduction. This year week dedicated to raise awareness of uh, sustainability and a greener mindset across Europe. The topic of this year is packaging and as you all are, are aware, five tons of waste is produced by the average European each year. Only 38% of waste in the EU is recycled and over 60% of household waste still goes to the landfill in some EU countries. These EU Green Deal policies are more, are more, and being more concrete, the packaging waste EU rules on packaging and waste, including design and waste manage, has been um, debated this Wednesday in, at the European Parliament and voted on its position on the packaging and packaging waste regulation and the Association of Cities and Regions for Sustainable Resource Management in which Navarra is part of, has made a statement regarding this position. I do not want to read it all because just a few thoughts about it, that even, even though the parliament position ensured that all packaging is to be recyclable by 2030, we regret that recycle has, on, has once again been prioritized over preventive measures which goes against the waste hierarchy. The government of Navarra is pioneered in green policies, as we are a region with our own taxation system and regional parliament, and therefore the capacity of creating our own rules and recollect our own taxes. In that sense, our regional parliament approved in 2018 the regional law of taxation and waste in the sense of creating a specific fund for the generation and management of waste based on the principle known as who creates the waste base. Also in 2022, regional law for climate change and energy transition encouraged to have more powerful tools in this topic and to be more ambitious in this sense, further that European level. For example, since 1st of January this year in 2023, we have a specific taxation for a special note on non-reusable plastic containers. The purpose of this tax is to promote the prevention of the generation of non reusable plastic packaging waste, as well as the promotion of recycling of plastic waste, contributing to the circularity of this material. Uh, 0 0.45 euros per kilo of plastic is the amount that the producer has to pay in this sense. And also in last year, in 2022, we approved the renal law for consumers and for the first time it is written in the law that the new generation rights, in this case, the article 13.8, says that Navarra citizens has the right of access to goods and services obtained according to the ethical and sustainable production and consumption models, actively participating in circular production and consumption processes and also in waste prevention and recycling that allows the transformation of a good and use it and destine it to be a waste to a new identity and value. For, I just wanted to have these three examples of the regional capacity that we have here in Navarra and that we have applied in order to promote this mindset, more circularity and also more aware of the um, waste reductions. But apart from law at that section, we have also plans and a long historical of circular economy creation here in our region. For example, in 2019, approved the agenda for the circular economy in 2030. In 2020, the initiative Navarra, Navarra Green merged all the measures aligning with the EU Green Deal. And in 2021, with the revision of the smart specialization strategy from S3 to S4, including sustainability, we created the challenge Navarra Circular, a cross-sectoral group of four departments of the government of Navarra, in which is led by the industrial transition, but also tourists and consumers, environmental and rural development and external actions, jointly with public enterprises and the private sector, we are creating this circular mindset 
among companies and also citizens. This public-private initiative accounts with more than 100 members, companies, and offers free services such as circular economy diagnostic for companies. We have showcased this to the European Commission in Brussels. We have been also present in Ecomondo in Italy and within our colleagues from the ACR Plus at the, and of course at the European Committee of Regions and Cities, where we showcased this example of good practice called the Navarra Circular. Our objectives are to get engaged 200 companies in 2025, to have 75 collaborative projects and also 200 students formed, and 100 civil servants educated on the circular economy principles. Last but not least, we are leading a proposal for the European Innovation Valleys of the new European Innovation Agenda. We are aiming to create the European Circular Economy Valley in which 10 regions will collaborate on the interregional calls on research and development on TRL 6 and 9 on circular economy projects for the SMEs. With our region, we count on Helsinki, Usima, the Northern Netherlands, Dalarna, Balkan, and Kavlebor from Sweden, Wallonia, Lithuania, Bulgaria, La Région de Normandy, à la France, Scotland, and ACR+. All of this is, plan, uh, is part of our plan of external action of 2021-2024 on the government of Navarra, and that's why we are celebrating the European Week of Waste Reduction. And here in Navarra, we have decided to organize an exchange of good practices with the city of Ancona in the Marker region, with Southern Waste and Connacht Ulster regions from, and from Navarra, we will have the opportunity to learn from the concrete example of a smoothie, of, of smoothie cafe uh, with our colleague Iñaki Ordazi, which is a company that is also part of the Navarra Circular Initiative. Many thanks for all of you for being with us today and also with all the attendees and we hope that you find this uh, webinar very useful and interesting for your, uh, for your calls. Thanks a lot. Thank you, Sergio. We will start our exchange of good practices with the city of Ancona with some packaging reduction projects there. And for this, we have a Dr. Matteo Giantomasi, Director for the Institutional Communication and External Relations of the Territorial Assembly. Welcome. Good morning. Um... I am uh, Karima Michi, and um, I am with my colleague, uh, Matteo Giantomassi, and um, we work at uh, Assemblea Territoriale d'Ambito, Ancona. Uh, the acronym is um, ATA Rifiuti Ancona, and today I present to you our organization and the, our projects about uh, waste reduction with a particular focus on uh, packaging reduction. Ata Rifiuti is the organization that plans and organizes the integrated waste cycle in the province of Ancona in the region Marche in the middle uh, Italy, in the center of Italy. The territory of the Ata is composed uh, of uh, 46 municipalities and the population is approximately uh, um, 460,000 inhabitants. Ata Rifiuti manages the municipalities with the following characteristics. There are six cities with a population greater than 25,000 inhabitants and 11 cities with a population greater than 5,000 inhabitants and uh, there are uh, 11, uh, 20, 29 cities with a population fewer than 5,000 inhabitants. Between all these uh, um, uh, 46 municipalities, there are um, three cities um, that are tourist coastal, and uh, there are five cities are uh, mountainous. This is uh, the um, situation, the current situation of our territory about uh, um, waste service. 
There is a separated door-to-door -door waste collection in all municipalities. The majority of cities have compost, garbage or rubbish, and recycling door-to-door -door collection. Currently, the management of the service is fragmented and the tariff system paid, pay as you throw is applied, only to municipalities. The, this is the um, planned situation um, that uh, ATA um, for um, of ATA for um, the next three years. Waste management will be introduced to a single manager and paid will be extended to whole municipalities, how the Piano d'Ambito recently approved. The Piano d'Ambito is the a formal document, our formal document that plans um, the management the, and the service about waste. All municipal containers will be equipped with a code to identify the user. Waste reduction actions will also be extended to all municipalities. Environmental communication is very important to achieve these objectives. The results that um, ATA achieved um, in the 2022 are these. Amount of waste collected 224,000 tons for, uh, per year. Amount of waste recycled, 160,000 tons per year. And percentage of separate waste collection, 72%. These are the expected results for next years until 2027. The Piano d'Ambito lasts until 2027 and it sets the following objectives at the higher level. Separate waste collection, 77%. Reduction in total waste produced, 5.4%. Extension of home collection services and the paid system to all users, 100%. Environmental communication waste, uh, and the waste uh, uh, reduction are very important to achieving the objectives of our plan. In this slide, there are some examples of the our communication projects. The our most important projects about waste reduction are these. Fatti gli avanti tuoi to reduce food waste in restaurants and school canteens. Scegli il compostaggio, chose home composting, to monitor and disseminate the practice of home composting. Lavabile sano, washable is healthy, to reduce disposable nappies and encourage the use of washable nappies. Scegli il riuso, chose the reuse, to encourage the spread of reuse centers throughout the territory. Ecofeste, eco festivals for sustainable management of public events. Then, um, three hour project of waste reduction are appropriate for packaging reduction. There are three projects that uh, are Bevi a rendere, Libera la spesa, and uh, L'acqua va, non va per l'insù. The purposes of the first one project, Baby are Rendere, are to prevent the production of plastic waste, to promote a positive image of bars, pubs, pizzerias in the historic city center, and to enhance the urban environment. To achieve these goals, it is necessary to replace disposable cups with the reusable cups with a deposit in nightlife venues. The actions of this, um, this project are these. The merchants seen the deposit scheme by which they undertake to display the window sticker and informational material and to raise awareness of the value of the initiative among this, their customers. 
sell drinks using washable and reusable plastic cups in the lieu of disposable plastic cups with a deposit. Use the amount from deposits not to return to the business, but to develop the project itself, purchase additional glasses, etc. The another project for the packaging reduction is the Libera la Spesa. The purpose of this project is to reduce the use of single-use packaging in grocery store. To achieve this goal, it is necessary to encourage um, customers to use their own uh, containers and bags to purchase fruits, vegetables, and daily production as uh, cold meats, cheeses, cold foods. Sorry. The action to realize this project are foster the emergency of a network of sustainable business, promote the use of reusable, uh, re reusable containers for food purchases, promote the use of uh, reusable bags for the purchase of fruits and vegetables in place of disposable bags made of compostable materials, promote the project for specific communication materials. And uh, the last project, the, our last project is uh, L'Acqua non va per l'insù. The purpose of the project is uh, to return to drinking local tap, tap water to reduce packaging and uh, regenerate community spirit. To achieve this goal, it is necessary to create networking for the reduction of single-use plastic bottles and to promote the responsible use of water through the collaborative involvement of citizen businesses and agencies. The actions of this um, project are to encourage citizens to refill water bottles at the different points in cities, to promote the emergence of a network of a sustainable business, to map water sources on an app, my Google, of participating, participating business and the public drinking fountains, to promote the project through specific communication materials. Thanks for your attention. Thank you very much, uh, Karima. Uh, is Matteo presenting now or? No, no it's okay. No, okay. it's okay. It's okay. It's okay. Uh, excellent. So we go now to, we travel to Ireland. And for this, we have um, uh, Kevin Swift, regional coordinator in the Conagulster region, and Philippe Aking, regional waste coordinator of the South and West region. And if we understood well, so with this, with you both, we cover uh, two thirds of, of uh, Ireland, two, two of the three regions. I think we start with Kevin. Yeah. Good morning, everybody. Hello. Uh, so thank you for the invitation. And this morning, I'm going to talk a little bit about um, how we are planning for a packaging waste in Ireland. And I'm going to talk a little bit about our new national plan in Ireland, which includes uh, provisions for packaging in Ireland. And my colleague, Philippa, then will talk about some practical examples of implementation later on. Okay. So, uh, our national plan in Ireland has been prepared by the regional waste planning offices. Ireland is divided into three regions for the purposes of waste planning. Philippa, my colleague, looks after one. I look after another. And we have another colleague who looks after the eastern region. So our plan uh, aims to uh, get to the population of approximately 5 million people now in Ireland. Okay. So the big changes for us in Ireland is that now we have a single national plan. And at the centre of that national plan is circularity. And a big part of our plan 
is collaboration and co-ownership because in regional government, in the municipalities in Ireland, we do not control the delivery of waste services. We regulate waste services, but we do not control the delivery. So those are the big changes, okay. So our new plan is divided into five volumes. It's a big plan because our statutory laws require that we include a lot of information. So we've divided it into five volumes to make it easy for practitioners to access and to navigate. So the first volume deals with the current situation and the challenges we face. The second volume deals with the responses to those challenges and the actions that we're going to take. And the third volume deals with how we're going to deliver the plan. The other volumes relate to environmental assessment and supporting documentation. Okay. So this is how the volumes of our national plan look in print format, okay. And we have prepared an overall short executive summary that summarizes all volumes of the plan. And this volume can be found on our national waste platform, which is called mywaste.ie. So if anybody wants to go and have a look at our documentation, that's where you will find it. Okay. So just a little bit about the volume two piece of our national plan, which is where we talk about the core positions of our plan, the core policies, and in particular, the areas, the focus areas that we are paying attention to in our plan. Okay. So our overall plan ambition is for 0% total waste growth per person uh, per annum over the lifetime of the plan. And we hope to do or achieve this by maintaining the advances that we have made, by accelerating the transition to a circular economy, by influencing sustainable consumption, by improving the capture of all resources, i.e. waste, by optimizing circularity and by enabling compliance with policy and legislation. Okay. So this represents the a big step in pushing back against the amount of waste that we produce in Ireland and trying to put a lid on the amount of waste that we produce in Ireland. Okay. Our government in Ireland has asked us to look at some targets around consumption um, compliance, sorry, consumption um, contamination uh, and other areas. And we have introduced into our plan a number of national targets. Uh, the first of which, okay, uh, relates to the reduction in the amount of residual waste that we produce. Uh, and the second of which really gets to the amount of construction and demolition waste that we produced. So from the point of view of waste reduction, okay, Philippa, um, we are looking at a 6% reduction in the amount of residual waste that we produce over the lifetime of the plan. And, okay, Philippa, we're looking at a 12% reduction in the amount of construction and demolition waste we produce over the lifetime of the plan, which is a five-year period, okay. In addition to that, we still have to implement our EU targets and we're very mindful in our plan and we have included in our plan all of those targets and in particular uh, for today's discussion the packaging targets that we have to achieve uh, under the EU directives. Okay. We have set out a range of core policies in our plan. There are 13 core policies in our national plan and a key policy, okay, is changing behaviours. This is core policy number five, 
And this is all about influencing uh, behavior in relation to uh, waste generation, waste prevention, waste reduction. And we have already you know, done an awful lot of work in this area over recent years in terms of campaigns, in terms of initiatives, education, awareness, in trying to influence behavior and improve behavior around uh, waste generation, uh, prevention, and reduction. Okay. But because the waste area is so large, we have chosen to break it down into 16 focus areas. The first four of those focus areas relate to operational areas like commercial waste, household waste, and collection systems. The next bunch of focus areas of which there are six relate to material streams like food waste and obviously packaging waste for today's discussion. And the third bunch of focus areas of which there are six also relate to infrastructure. But today we are focusing on the focus area for packaging waste and the focus area for single use plastics. And they're called focus area six and focus area seven in our national plan. Okay. So each focus area has a fact sheet associated with it. And this is a guide to our fact sheet that's included in our plan. So key to the fact sheet is that there are targeted policies, okay? And there are a list of targeted policies for each focus area. And there are also a list of priority actions that we will carry out for each focus area. Okay. So looking just briefly then at the focus area that relates to packaging waste, what we can say is that, okay, the purpose is to prevent packaging waste through improved business and producer practices. And we have a range of targeted policies to try to achieve that. On the right-hand side of the focus area for packaging waste, we have a range of priority actions that will help us to address packaging waste over the lifetime of the plan. So just mentioning one or two of the uh, actions that we hope to carry out. For example, under PA 6.1 there, we hope to develop and deliver targeted campaigns to improve consumer behavior, preventing and segregating packaging waste. We hope to promote best practice in the retail sector, including in-store packaging collection, systems, deposit return schemes, promotion of reusable plastic packaging and product refills, all of which have been mentioned by Ancona as it happens. Uh, we hope to promote the introduction of deposit return schemes for plastic bottles and aluminium cans, and that's been introduced in uh, Q1 2024. Uh, we hope to promote the use of recycled materials in packaging uh, with designers and manufacturers and increase compliance scheme participation with the support of compliance schemes in Ireland. So we have a range of targeted policies for packaging. We have a range of specific priority actions for packaging that we will carry out over the lifetime of this plan, specifically for packaging waste. Okay. We also have a focus area in our national plan for single use plastic. And again, we have taken the same approach here where we have a range of targeted policies uh, on the left-hand side of our fact sheet there in green. And we have a range of priority actions on the right-hand side in orange for single use plastics. So again, taking the same approach as we did for 
packaging materials to single use plastics. So for example, we under PA 7.1, for example, we are going to monitor the application of the prohibitions on single use plastic materials that have been introduced in Ireland. So we have already prohibited certain single use plastic items in Ireland, and we're going to monitor that. Uh, we're going to implement best practice with regard to single use plastic in the hospitality area uh, at festivals uh, and with in conjunction with local authorities. We're going to monitor the application of existing and new environmental levies to see what the impact of those are on single use plastics. And we're going to pilot the elimination of single use plastics in, sing in certain towns uh, in Ireland as well. And finally, we're going to ensure that there is an adequate and proportionate enforcement regime that backs up all those priority actions. So we have a focus area for packaging in our plan. We have a focus area for single-use plastics in our plan, and each has a selection of targeted policies and a selection of priority actions that are going to drive uh, our approach to uh, packaging waste over the lifetime of this plan. Okay. When we look at the distribution of priority actions that we have chosen, we have 83 priority actions in our plan and about 33% of those in that little blue segment reside or are the responsibility of local government or the municipalities. The balance of the actions are either shared or are the responsibility of other players. And this is an example of collaboration in our plan. So we have to, we need to, and we will collaborate with others to achieve uh, the actions that we want to achieve under our plan. Okay. We got the next one, Philippa there. Yeah, it's just struggling a little bit. Um, That's okay. We just might stop sharing a minute and reshare and just see if it continues. So just while Philippa is doing that, the last slide is about the costs associated with uh, the implementation of our plan. And that's something that we are very conscious of, that, you know, in order to make the transition to a circular economy and also to achieve what we want to achieve in relation to packaging and single-use plastics in particular, there will be a cost associated with that. And in our new plan, we have set out some headline costs that we think we will need to cover uh, to deliver on these actions. Uh, we have highlighted costs in four key areas, uh, communication, uh, better engagement with key stakeholders, uh, more or enhanced regulation, and finally, uh, investment, capital investment in facilities to facilitate the capture or collection of, of packaging waste. So that concludes my contribution. Um, I'm going to hand you over to Philippa, who will be uh, outlining some practical examples of uh, these actions in practice. Thank you. Okay, so we're going to just look at three initiatives. The first one being elimination of single use plastics at festival and events. And um, we ran a number of pilot projects recently, and we're going to just quickly look at those. We're going to look at our commercial waste segregation and the tools that we have available to that sector uh, to kind of segregate their waste better and improve their packaging seg segregation. And finally, we're just going to look at quickly the deposit and return system for our plastic bottoms and aluminium cans has been introduced in Ireland, as Kevin said, um, in, at the start of 2024, actually February 2024. So um, basically the first one, the reduction and elimination of single-use plastic at public events. Um, after the pandemic, as you probably noticed, we began to use a lot more plastic than we were doing beforehand. And so we wanted to kind of get people's mindset back to that place where they were before the pandemic. So um, we 
commissioned a report in February 2022, and that report was on the reduction of elimination of single-use plastics at public events in a post-pandemic society. And the report summarizes the findings of a high-level review, looking at what was out there, review of the stakeholders involved. It looked at how other countries in Europe were man managing their single-use plastic at events. And we did a number of stakeholder interviews. And the report looked at kind of various solutions. And it does provide a roadmap for the events and festival industries to reduce and eliminate single-use plastics at events. And that's just the cover of the... Uh, actual report there. So we kind of set out then on a project to reduce and eliminate single-use plastic at public events. And the objective was kind of to implement the immediate term recommendations of the report itself. And the key actions of that were to establish a focus group of the relevant key st stakeholders, kind of discuss how we're going to go, go about the single-use plastic elimination at events and festivals. And then we had to identify and organize four uh, pilots at kind of diverse events so that, you know, we get that aspect of different types of events, big and small. And finally, develop a guide to plastic free festivals and events for the event and festival operators. So our timeline was um, then we started the industry consultation in September 2022. Uh, we had our first pilot in October 2022, our second pilot in April 2023, third pilot in June 2023, our fourth pilot in July 2023, and then we had our second industry consultation uh, kind of post the pilots when we had our pilot reports in October 2023, and we're currently finalizing a guide to plastic-free festivals and events. So that's just a picture there of the reusable crates that are brought in with the um, single use, uh, the reusable cups for events. And you can see the temporary uh, marquee there behind it because at one side we had all the, the clean uh, reusable cups and at the other side you had to have a place to store the, the dirty cups. Because you can imagine at a lot of these festival and events you are in a kind of maybe a slightly more uh, rural area where you don't have a lot of water and you don't have a lot of power. Um, so those are things that you have to remember with festivals and events. So our first uh, event was a, a four day music event called Puka that's run at Halloween time in Ireland. And Puka is an Irish word in the Irish language for ghost. Um, so uh, you can see some uh, pictures from the event here. And the system in place was a two euro continuous deposit system with a cash refund. And our key elements for this was the term deposit was not understood by all attendees. They thought that they were getting their cup to take away after the event. And uh, security and cleaning staff did a lot of the collection and retrieving of the cups. Uh, you can see some of the signage there explaining the regional cup, cup system. Um, it's not a particularly big event. There were 7,000, over 7,000 cups used. We still had a loss rate of 13%. Our carbon equivalent, for the event was 482 kilos with a saving of 223 kilos in comparison to using single use plastics at the event. What you can see, it was 73% more expensive than using single use plastics. Um, our second event was a three hour music event, smaller event, park after dark. Um, the system in place was not to have a double hazard here that, that you know, you just basically got your reusable cup with your first drink and you brought it back every time you wanted a new drink. Um, you know, you can see there, buy your drink, uh, which includes a free cup, return your cup to the bar and do not take your cup home. Um, the audience feedback was very positive and they said they would be happy to pay a deposit. We did a bit of a survey at that one. A uh, small amount of cups used, but we had a very small uh loss rate here of only 3%. So our carbon equivalent impact was 129 with a saving of 27 kilos of carbon equivalent when you compare to using single use plastics. But you can see as well, it was still more expensive than using single use plastic at 87% more expensive. Our third event was quite a big event, was a three day camping and music event. It was called Body and Soul. And it is a particularly sustainable event. The whole theme there, they tend to be quite sustainable. Uh, it was a two year continuous deposit system, cash and card refunds. Uh, you had integrated at the bars, at the campsite info points, uh, there was a rent and return messaging, you can see there. 
we decided to change the messaging to rent and return because of the fact that the project didn't seem to kind of work well with people and uh, the infrastructure needed was that central storage uh, marquee and we had a number of staff working there with the bars to bring the clean cups to the bars and take away the dirty cups. Key learnings, card refund needs to be tested in advance. We ran into a problem here, a company called Square were running the car refunds and uh, it didn't work very well. <laughs> so um, you need a lot of testing in advance of these things. That was something we learned for the future. What happened with the card refund was very simple. You had to go back to the original transaction and it was very e easy to refund the whole transaction rather than just refund the actual two euro deposit. So the bar managers were going, well, we'll make no money this weekend at the end of refunding all of the actual transactions themselves. And the, one of the other key learnings was the reusable hard crates are essential because the company supplying these um, actually brought in some new containers and cardboard boxes which are not suitable for that type of area. So there's 24,000 cups used, 87% return rate. So we had significant loss rate, but we figured a lot of the actual cups went back to the camping areas where people were using it themselves for whatever you know kind of provisions they got themselves to the event. Our CO2 uh, carbon equivalent was 1.52 tonnes. Um, they save in about 700 kilos in comparison to single-use plastics. And it was a much more expensive with 166% more expensive than single-use plastics. Our final event was a, a half marathon called the Clontarf Half Marathon. Uh, in this, we had a refill stations with reusable cups. There was no deposit here. Uh, the key learnings were reusable cup collection bins must be different to the regular waste bins because you can see in the picture there that everything was thrown in the cups, the banana skins, the uh, milkshakes that they got afterwards, all thrown in together in the one bin. So if you're going to have these reusable and refillable cups, you actually um, really need to have the separate bin clearly identified and um, we need a lot of messaging to get that message across. Now, there was 19,500 cups used with a 95.5% return rate, only a 4.5% loss rate. And that's because um, of the people working on the system removed all the cups from the bins. A saving of 650 kilos carbon equivalent in comparison to single-use plastics. And it was about 112% more expensive. So overall, um, these are the summary results. But um, we'll just look at pilot three, which was the biggest one. And you can see there the quantity ordered, um, this is a problem. They order more than they need. So then you have a lot more storage on the site that you need to have. Um, and that causes difficulties in itself. The quantity used about 24,000 cups, the return rate 20,000 cups. So we had a loss rate of 4,000 cups. And um, our carbon equivalent footprint was about 1.5 ton. The saving for that event alone, 700 kilos. But because these reusable cups have a 75 parent use, that would be 15 uh, ton carbon equivalent. And if we uh, were using single use plastic for all those events, it would have been a saving of 151.5 tons. So overall, the common findings were three out of the four, four pilots had an overestimation of the quantity of cups they required. So that's a big learning for all the event organizers and the bar operators. All pilot events saved carbon equivalent from switching to reusables and the ones off capacity and that are projected to save hugely over multiple uses, but they are more expensive. All events were visibly cleaner on the ground because people didn't throw down the cups because they would uh, bring them back or they could get the deposit back. Washing was the lowest carbon impact of each event. Manufacturing and losses and losses of cup are the highest carbon impact. Um, so that's actually really key to the future making sure you get the cups back um, because that's where you can influence this. Um, and all of this is difficult enough in Ireland is at the moment because we have only one reusable cup supplier who's able to take them back and wash them. So we need a little bit more uh, certainty in the market for more people to invest in that market. So we're at the final stages of producing our guide to plastic free festival and events. And you can see there the food on board, some of the reusable boards that were used at the body and soul to actually uh, provide food for people um, rather than having reusable delf at an open air event, which can, you know, can be very difficult. And you can see there, there's a roadmap for reusable cups within it. 
and looking at your requirements with your bar operator, ascertain the quantity of cups you require. So it's so important. And then you need to investigate lots of different things about the cup rental, the cost of rental, the cost of washing, the cost of delivering collection. Is there a sale return for clean and unused cups? So um, I think overall, we were very happy with how far we got with this. And we're hoping this guide will really help people to improve in the future. And we have in our reports made a number of recommendations to government that they really need to consider, uh, you know, the banning of, uh, you know, single use cups for beverages at festivals and events. Uh, I think that would be very important. So the second thing we're going to look at is our commercial waste toolkit. And uh, why we need a commercial waste toolkit, because recently our environmental Protection agency. We will need to, to finish in two minutes or so. Okay, yeah, no, no problem at all. Um, we uh, have um, a characterization study that shows that um, there's 26 of materials found uh, were, were only the materials found that were the correct materials for the bin. So we basically have to um, have a commercial toolkit that shows us um, how they can segregate their waste better so that you know the packaging waste can be segregated better so i just quickly i will not even show you the video because we, oops, we haven't time so people can order online the posters that you uh, we have here and they can all the, otherwise they can download that they can also download the booklet the infographics and the stickers so that's just examples of the recyclable uh, posters you can have uh, or stickers and the food waste ones and the general waste bin. In addition to that, there's uh, outdoor uh, labeling available as well. And additional to that, there's workplace animations, which because in this sector, there's a lot of change and a lot of staff. And you can see there's four animations available, why you segregate waste, how to recycle, how to segregate food waste and other waste streams. And we've done a fairly serious promotion on this as well. So we have user testimonials there as well from supermarkets, shopping center, leisure center, and local authority. And they can be viewed on our My Waste website, which Kevin mentioned earlier as well. So we're doing a lot of promotion of that in uh, like in magazines, uh, like you know, the public sector magazines, checkout magazines, magazines, a hotel and catering magazine. So just to get this message across there that we have this toolkit, you can make your segregation much easier in the workplace. And uh, we're doing it through, um, started in November 23, it runs to March 23, through Meta, LinkedIn. We're targeting towards business. We're doing a bit of website takeovers as well. And we have a Green Hubs, which we granted it as well. We have uh, five times on phase one. We're going to have seven and two, phase two. And they're all using the commercial waste toolkit for the businesses that are involved in this network so that they can do better segregation. And in the last minute, we'll quickly talk about our deposit return scheme that's coming into Ireland. Um, this is a schematic scene. It looks very difficult with all the over and back, but basically the producer sells a filled beverage container to the retailer for a product price plus the refundable deposit. And he also pays a fee to the return and the return are the administrator of the whole deposit return system. The retailer sells the beverage to the consumer for the product price and the refundable deposit. And then the consumer returns the intact container to the retailer uh, or to the reverse vending machine that the retailer might have, and they will get the deposit back or a voucher to redeem at the till. The return, the system uh, administrator, they reimburse the retailer uh, and they also give them a handling fee. And they organize the collection from all the retailers nationwide and they organize the recycling as well. And they organize all the contracts for that. So it goes out on the 1st of February. We have 134 producers registered already. That's 90% of the market. Uh, we have 2,022 retailers. That's 4,000 premises uh, already registered. Uh, the reverse ventures roll now. There's 2,000 going to be at the go live date and there'll be 2,600 when complete. And there's 5,000 in scope uh, uh, materials, products, both aluminium and plastic. And they sort of range an area from 150 to three liters, and it's 15 to 25 cent deposit, depending on the size. And this finally is some of the uh, awareness that's going out there. And you can, sorry, and you can see the little uh, video there. And it just shows you to buy, return, refund, and you're back again, uh, buying again. And it just shows you that, you know, it is keeping that circular message going. 
and I'm done and I'll stop sharing now. Thank you very much, everyone. Thank you, Philippa and Kevin. It was a lot. Uh, now, so we finish our exchange of good, good practices with uh, a, a case uh, in Navarra. And for this, we have uh, Iñaki Urdazi from uh, Small Fit uh, Kappa, uh, who will tell us about strategic projects to reduce uh, plastic packaging. No te oímos. Hello, good morning. Can you see my screen? Yes. Okay. So thank you very much for inviting me to this event of the European uh, Waste Reduction Week. Thanks to the government of Navarra. And let's start introducing myself. I am responsible for market and product development in Smurfy Kappa in the craft specialties uh, division. Um, Smurfy Kappa is a worldwide company leader in Europe in corrugated and paper packaging and also back in box products. And we are producing virgin and recycled paper also in number one in, in Europe. We are related with the packaging uh, industry, directly related. It's an Irish company, so our colleagues here uh, will know very well, for sure. Uh, Small Big Kappa is a business with an essential and enduring purpose uh, to create solutions that protect, uh, protect what matter all and protecting our customer product as well, and at the same time taking care of, of the environment. So this is our main uh, goal and, and our main business success as well. Um, in Navarra region, in Spain, in the north of Spain, we have uh, three operations of Smurfy Kappa. Uh, one is uh, MG Paper in San Huesa. We are producing uh, paper, paper rolls for several applications. Another one we have in, in Pamplona, very close to Pamplona, that is corrugated division. And we have in Aoiz also uh, Exacom uh, packaging for heavy duty products. Uh, now, focusing more into, into the topic, uh, I'm sorry, to, this, is, uh, this is like this in Spanish, but here you have an example of different announcements from big companies uh, saying, saying to the world and, and to the consumers that they are reducing mainly the plastic, plastic packaging and reducing their waste. So since, I don't know, maybe 10 years, all these big brands are uh, trying to reduce or saying that they are reducing. Uh, but if we go to the statistics and we focus only in Europe, Eurostat states that packaging waste in the European uh, market has grown by more than 20% in the last 10 years. And if the current uh, tendency maintains, if we increase uh, will be increased like, by 19% between now and 2030. So, in fact, all this uh, data recently published by the European Statistics Office indicate that in 2021, the European Union generates uh, almost 200 uh, kilograms of packaging waste per inhabitant, uh, so 10 kilos more per person than the previous year, So, which represents the largest increase in the last 10 years. And in 2040, as our European Commission is stated, uh, we will have to reduce by 20%, but almost we are in the opposite side. So we have to do something different to, to decrease the quantity of, of waste generation and to increase the quantity of recycling, for sure. So in Spain, uh, what we are using is around 180 kilos per capita of packaging and recycling uh, 118. So 64 kilos per capita per year in Spain remain unrecycled. Depending on the material, if it is plastic, will remain in the environmental uh, zones like uh, 200, 300, 500 years. If it is paper or, or other uh, biomaterials, will degrade it. But in any case, we have to increase the quantity of recycled paper, of recycled uh, material. And, and if we can do and develop packaging without any uh, liquid in the environment will be uh, the main goal from, uh, from our opinion. And also uh, we have to recover 
to recover the the material and to if we if it is possible recover and produce energy. No? This is some data about the recovery of packaging waste until 2021. Talking more deeply uh, in the plastic packaging, that is uh, some of the focus of today's topics. Uh, even with all the new regulation and social awareness, the plastic packaging recycling in Europe is still going down. So we have to, to, to do something. And it's very difficult to recycle the plastic. And in our opinion, uh, it's not only the solution is to, to, to recycle the plastic, because uh, we have to develop materials that are really, uh, that are really good for the environment, even if, if they are not recycled. So uh, what is happening is that new materials are being introduced in the market that sometimes are confusing the consumer. Here we have some example. Uh, in this case, to take fruits from the supermarket, you are using similar materials, apparently. Uh, are, the three of them are apparently are plastic, but they are different in, in some properties. And sometimes, uh, as a consumer, throw it uh, in the wrong bin. So, in some cases, the polyethylene, I am recyclable, but not renewable. I am renewable, but please don't recycle me. This is bioplastic. If you throw bioplastic to the recycle bin of plastics, you will not be recycled and will be a problem in the recycle system. In some cases, I am valuable, but not renewable or recyclable. So this is almost very difficult from the point of view of the consumer. In our case, if, you, if we use paper, in this case, it's very clear for the consumer. They have to throw it to the paper bin. And this is why the, pa the paper and packaging is the most recycled material in Europe. Last uh, statistics was around more than 70% of the paper that we produce is recycled. And in some countries in Europe, there are more than 80%. But even if, because uh, problem, we throw it to the garden or we are in the beach and with this material, the, pa the paper and wind is go away. You have to be, we can be sure that we are not damaged the, the environment because if paper, and as I show you later, is uh, a renewable raw material made of, of good and raw material. So this is something very important to, to be clear from the point of view of the consumer. So. Talking about the market and the supply chain, uh, our customers and consumers, uh, we as consumers are asking for more agility and also in a sustainable way, efficiency, more speed, and of, co of course, cost reduction. So this is the situation today. As a consumer, uh, we want to buy whatever in my mobile and to have it tomorrow or today at my home. And this is uh, some occasion very difficult to do it in a sustainable way. But these are the rules that we have today in the market, and we have to, to, to work together to try to do this. But the way, as we think as a consumer, is also affecting uh, the sustainable uh, part. I don't know if you know, but in the era of the linear, linear economy, last August, the second, uh, was the Earth Overshoot Day. So this means that we need today two planets to produce the raw materials that we are using. In Smurfy Kappa, what we are doing when we are developing new packaging is based in three principles. Circular by design, so design out of waste and pollution from the outside. Circular by human, keeps product and raw materials in use for as long as possible. And circular by nature, so regeneration by nature. And this is very important. So we count on natural intelligence, and we believe that there is only one true cycle from nature to nature. So in the nature, there is not a lot of examples of reusability, but there is huge examples, and everything is from nature to nature. And this is a, a clear example. And we are our vision is is uh, for packaging is to be truly circular for, with this. Uh, three principles, circular by design with zero impact end to end in the process and to also for sure uh, improve the collection system working at, 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 a, at a scale and in an industrial way. While in the Smurfy Kappa specifically, because we are using renewable raw material, in this case is the pine, 
is 100% local, so not more than 100 kilometers from, from the mills. Uh, in Europe, just for your understanding, we are not lagging trees without control. In fact, thanks to the good industry, forestry area is increasing since the beginning of the 20s. And why is growing? Because there is a clear demand in good industry and we are part of that, of that industry as a paper producer. We are talking also about construction, wood construction, or other type of, of wood in the wood industry. We are managing very well the forest area and taking care of their needs and cutting only the trees that the forest need to grow in a better way. To give you an example, Sangüesa Mill is from the 50s in Navarra, and since the beginning of the activity, we were using trees. So if we didn't manage well and foster the plantation and the quality of the forest, we will not have any trees around the mill today. And it's completely the opposite. Around our mill, we have more and more trees every year. The activity that we are doing in the forest is very important to keep the biodiversity of the forest, the quality of the trees that we have, and clearing the forest to avoid fires. And this is something uh, very important. So from the trees, we are only using the thinnest part of the log. The rest is for construction, pallets, sawmills, and the most important part is that thanks to the photosynthesis, we are reducing CO2 emissions. This is very important when we are talking with customers because sometimes they don't know about this. And what is more important is the, that the, is uh, the sustainable way that we are doing our forest management. One meter cubic of wood captures one ton of CO2 and emitting almost 700 kilos of oxygen. And we have all the certification, probably you know about FSC or PSC, uh, to be sure that we are doing it in a, in a very good way. Uh, let me go to Spain and explain to Spain and explain the, the means that we, they are using draw, these raw materials. We are producing more than 250,000 tons of paper, thanks to 400 people that we are working here. We are producing lightweight galamid substance for packaging, so from 30 grains of square meter paper up to 120. As we are an integrated mill, in each mill we have a biomass and recovery boiler, and in total, five paper machines. So today we are serving from San Huesa, from Navarra, more than 700 customers around the world. 80% of our sales are out of Iberia, and in Europe we have a market share around 15%. And we are only using 100% long pine fibers to get the best mechanical resistance per square meter. And we are also, because thanks to the biomass and recovery boiler, producing green energy with our boilers that are helping also to reduce the impact of, of our meat. Um, so now we have the logs. And to the, we are debarking and cutting into chips. Then we cook it in the pulp to produce uh, cellulose and recover the black liquor that we start with cooking the chips. And we use the barks to feed the biomass boiler. Uh, so this is uh, thanks to, to this, we can produce green energy. And the black liquor to feed the recovery boiler and then produce high pressure steam that we pass through the turbine to produce green energy. We use the medium pressure steam that remain in the process uh, in the cooker and also to dry the paper in the paper machine. So all the integrated craft mills are using a similar process, but we are very focusing on the cogeneration and reducing a lot of the, the impact. Where, is, uh, where are our customers awarded? Where are the main applications? Here you can see some standard applications related with industry, paper bags, uh, boutique bags, masking, also uh, glass industry as a protection uh, layers, and also sack uh, business, uh, paper cords, or other type of, of application. But also we are developing new products around this. So related with agriculture, uh, related with uh, secondary packaging, envelopes, st uh, stretch craft paper to replace the free film. And so there is a lot of, uh, of opportunities that we are developing and trying to reduce the impact of plastic. And, and in fact, we are reducing a lot, thousands of plastic tons because of these new applications. So to help our customers to, to introduce new packaging materials, we have developed several tools that are helping them to measure the impact of the packaging in the products uh, one of them is our LCA tool, and we, here we have a clear example with, with a business case 
where our customers can compare the current product, for example, in this case, uh, polyethylene, uh, low-density polyethylene bath, uh, versus the same bath, but made with our AD paper or cosmetic. So we are focusing on, first of all, raw material production, use and recycling. This is very important. We are comparing different materials, in some cases heavier, but with a better impact in CO2 emission. In fact, negative impact thanks to our raw material in this case. And we have to take into consideration also the end of life of the product. So the life of recycling of this material in Spain, this is the case in Spain, is 37% of the low density polyethylene. In paper, is 71. The light of incineration of this material, the low density polyethylene, is 23% and 3% only in paper. And we have to count this because when we are incinerating the material, we, have, we are emitting also CO2 emissions, so we have to count this. And the light look of line filling or littering is around 33% in the low density polythene, 23% in uh, the paper. So this littering are, have a big impact. So in this, in one bag, we are almost 581 grains per year of this material, the low density polyethylene. In paper, only 0.3. Why? Because it's 100% compostable, 100% biodegradable. So at the end, with the same product, but made by low density polyethylene or uh, paper, the impact is uh, quite different. Minus 3.3 grains CO2 equivalent when we, are, when we are using the paper, and plus 10 grains CO2 emission when we are using low density polyethylene. So this type of, of tools are helping also our customers to develop different solutions. And we can choose between different types of paper, also different types of plastics. So this is a, a tool that is helping a lot making decisions. So at the end, our message is that your packaging is still alive when you are using paper. It's the most recycled by, uh, material. is 100% recyclable and truly recycled. And for sure, it's compostable and biodegradable. In our case, compostability is not something that we are promoting a lot because the first thing is to be recycled. Paper can be recycled even seven, eight times, no issue. But we are uh, very uh, sure that if the material remains in the soil or remains in, out of the scope of the recyclability, we are not damaged the, the environment. So in fact, we are composting in some cases. We are doing this, our agriculture and farmers are doing this to increase the quality of the soils in some cases. As a summary, this is uh, the main properties, so 100% renewable, negative carbon from green in some cases, 100% recyclable, biodegradable, compostable. For sure, as we are using a raw material, natural organic raw material is uh, certified for food contact, and also FST or PIF, as I already commented. And just some cases, finally, some application uh, that maybe you don't know, but are very interesting. We are developing this paper pallet wrap to replace low density polyethylene uh, ring film by paper. So we develop a paper that can run with some machinery and can uh, wrap it very well. And also in the tissue market, uh, there is products that are now in the market that you can choose uh, paper instead of plastic. So we have uh, several business case, uh, success business case with our customers that are reducing the impact of, in this case, the plastic, but also reducing the impact of the material at the end as well. So this is all from my side. Our idea is uh, developing packaging that leaves no trace for future generation. And this is part of our Better Planet Packaging Initiative that we are very proud of it. And where a lot of customers are also uh, working with us, with us in, in this. So thank you, thank you very much for your time. It was a pleasure to be here and thank you. Thank you very much, Iñaki. Um, we have a couple of minutes for questions, comments, in case you would like to comment on each other, the speakers, or if the audience would like, someone would like to raise a hand. I don't see any questions in the, in the section dedicated. So feel free. If not, we will uh, we will be punctual and finish on time. 
Um, uh, we would like, from our delegation of uh, Navarra here in Brussels to the EU, we would like to thank you, the, the speakers, uh, Mateo, Karima, uh, Filipa, Kevin, uh, and Iñaki. It was really interesting to have you on board, and thank you very much for making time for, for this exchange of good practices. We hope that it was interesting for you and also for, for the audience, that it was uh, practical as well. Uh, from our delegation, we organized two events per month, more or less. Some of them uh, in the context of uh, important EU weeks like this one, the European Week of uh, Waste uh, Reduction. Every year we participate in this week because it is so important for us. Uh, this year we, we honor the, the focus uh, topic of the year, which is uh, packaging. Um, and the, the aim of uh, us organizing uh, so many events is to bring the EU uh, closer to our region and also to, to meet other actors that do uh, these important uh, uh, actions. Uh, so hopefully it was uh, useful for all of you. And, and from here, we, we say goodbye and see you soon.